Hello everybody, my name is Amul, I'm in Los Angeles, you're watching the Smoking Hot Coffee Show, where we cover internet startups, marketing, monetization, and design. I'm joined with... Hey guys, I'm Jeff Pelton, and I'm down here in San Diego. And so this is uh, Cup 48, Jeff. Yeah, getting close to 50. Yeah, very close to 50, and today we've got a special uh, guest, we've got Linus. He's the CEO of Flatter.com. That's F-L-A-T-T-R. So what exactly is Flatter, Jeff? Well, I'm really excited about this interview. I've been uh, waiting for this one for a couple weeks uh, uh, anxiously. Flatter is a beautiful product for uh, people to tip, uh, basically, or contribute to creators online. Uh, okay. So it's sort of a micro donation. Uh, it, you've seen it on the Internet. Uh, it looks like a like button, okay. uh, but it's a Flatter. Uh, and so people that are developers or uh, photographers or creators have sometimes put them uh, on their pages or their blogs throughout the internet. Okay, so we should delineate. Uh, we're, we're talking digital creators, people that create MP3s or uh, JPEGs or yeah. uh, .dot .AVIs or moves. So not physical products, but digital products, right? Right. Correct. Okay. And, and so uh, what's your feeling? Like, uh, you know, um, I haven't really seen a lot of these flatter buttons out there. Like, uh, what, what, what's happened recently that you think that's going to change things? Well, so they've been around for three years, I think, and they recently launched a new campaign where they're using social APIs, like uh, everything out there, if you're a developer, you're aware of like what Twitter, Facebook, uh, SoundCloud, uh, like looking on their homepage, they have GitHub, Vimeo, Instagram, app.net. 500 pixels. Uh, so all of these sites have things like like buttons, right. uh, thumbs up, yeah. uh, or uh, a GitHub has a star, like a favorite, or on Twitter you have favorites. Um, and so they're now tying these social behaviors into flatters. Oh, uh, interesting. So now so, it's seamless, so you don't even have to flatter or integrate I the flatter you, button onto just... your content. Your right. content's already on uh, Vimeo. We, right. Now you can t uh, reap the benefit of flatter without having to you know, go distribute oh, all your Oh, very cool, it. very cool. So if I'm a musician, I've got my music video on Vimeo, and if somebody, like, plus ones it or thumbs up it or likes it... So now your, your fellow Flatter users on Vimeo, uh, when they're liking your video, are contributing to your Flatter. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. so that isn't just a just a, an ego boost. I'm actually going to get some money out of this. Yeah, so I'm not doing it, uh, this justice. You're, everyone should go to the website uh, and see exactly how it works. Uh, and we'll hear more about it in the interview, but uh, it really is a great way for creators to to get a little bit of dough, uh, real money. And so, uh, you know, I asked that question of Linus. I mean, is anybody is this just pizza money? Are we just talking about like little bits here, ten bucks here, twenty bucks there, that kind of thing? <laughs> he said no. He said some of the top uh, flatter people on their network are, uh, you know, they're ma they're making what does he say, twenty five hundred euros, something like that. That's five grand. That, uh, that's that's yeah. that's pretty good money. So, I mean, this is really interesting to us, right, because obviously we're doing the show, but I, I think, uh, you know, as uh, entrepreneurs, everyone's trying to keep an eye out for this, but this is potentially a real play, a way for people to make money is yeah. by, uh, you know, people were laughing at blogging years ago, and, and uh, I think we're just moving down the road with uh, video content creation being uh, valuable, what people are able to do in, um, you know, small amounts of time or uh, so seemingly unprofessionally. Well, I have to say, Jeff, uh, for the years I've been doing this internet stuff, there have been f many companies that have tried to crack this micropayments nut and mm -hmm. nobody's done it. Even PayPal hasn't done it and they've basically shut off their micropayments as uh, Linus mentions in the interview. So whoever actually does n uh, crack this nut, this is a billion dollar pot of gold, Jeff. I mean, this is a huge, <laughs> huge, yep. huge market. Yeah, so, so I mean, we're going to hear it all from Flatter, and hopefully there's some developers listening or some entrepreneurs because they have an API, and uh, if I were you, I'd be thinking about ways to build on top of this or uh, at least plug into the API and make some use of it. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so without any further ado, let's cut to the interview. Uh, all right, uh, everybody, uh, here we are with Linus from Flatter. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Linus. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you, you know, how this thing form and what's your role and all that? Oh, a little bit about myself. Yeah. First, there was the dinosaurs, <laughs> and then came the internet. <laughs> yes, the internet. Thank goodness. No, yeah, I know, but I'm a kind of born up geek, done everything you can do with computers, and now I am the co-founder and CEO of Flatter, okay. and we are trying to 
make a um, internet a better place by allowing people to pay for free content or support creators or donate to content you like or whatever you want to call it. Okay. This is clearly a very, very large problem. Lots of content creators, a lot of creative people are not getting paid. And in fact, people would be happy to pay them, but it's not very easy to pay them. For many, many years, people have tried to crack the micropayments puzzle problem yep. for, 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 for a long time. And so how, how are you guys different? Tell me how you think you might crack this one. Yeah, we think that the biggest problem, as you say, is that it's not convenient enough to do. It's not a question of that people don't want to do it. It's just that micropayment hasn't worked because they ha it's it's too complicated. Okay. So, um, Linus, you guys have been around for like three years now, I think, and I've seen you all yep. throughout the web. Uh, I think you guys are releasing some new stuff to make it even easier, right? Yeah, we released some new stuff a month ago, and then yesterday we need we had to remove one of those also. That you might notice in the press. Okay. Um, but we are we have been striving for a way to make it as easy as possible since we began began, and the way we started was a um, an embedded button like a Facebook like button basically. Okay. And you put it on your web beside your content, and then people could click it to uh, give part of their monthly uh, donation budget to okay. that content or to you. So so I've talked to Jeff many times. You know, me and Jeff we review startups. And uh, I've, you know, I've said many times that, you know, uh, one of Steve Jobs' you know, brilliant things is he had that one click, you know, Amazon one click, 99 cents one click, you know, the whole like convenient one click. He has all these credit cards on file, you know. How many credit cards do you guys have on file? Are you trying to sort of create a one click experience? Tell us more. So Flattery is, is works a bit like a wallet. You you load it up with money, and then you you decide how much of that money you want to use each month. You can think of it like a subway card or a, a prepaid phone card. Okay. And that's that's also because we want to uh, be able to do the one click thing. Yeah. Um, it's it's only one click that that is easy enough. And actually, we kind of think that maybe one click is not easy enough either. Oh, awesome! Uh, I love that. How, tell me how you can make it even easier. Tell me. Um, for example, if you use GroupShark, okay. uh, you can automatically flatter artists when um, by just listening to their songs. Oh, that's um, cool! Amazing. Yeah. So, wow. so, this is an awesome new partnership you guys just announced, right? Oh, that is great! Yeah, tell us more it, about it, that. It has actually existed for a while. Uh, it has not oh, okay. been pushed um, publicly very much yet because we are still solving some technical uh, issues. Okay. Um, but. Uh, those will soon be solved and we will push it even more and we think that kind of use case is exactly the use case you want to do so for example if you uh, would watch this video uh, maybe you can hook up Flatter to automatically Flatter the video once you have watched it okay. because just, just by watching a video to the end it's, it's kind of a, um, a way of saying that this was valuable for me because gotcha. I actually watched all of it. I got you. By the uh, sheer so virtue yeah. of you consuming all of the content, you're basically voting. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So gotcha. and of course, there are there are um, um, a lot of content that that is not possible for for a blog post uh, or an uh, image, for example. There is there is no way of telling that you actually valued the content just by by looking at it. Um, but for uh, Videos and music, for example, there are some third-party services that uh, flatters articles you add to your reader list, for example. Okay. And that is also something that you explicitly do, and and um, the fact that you actually do it is probably reason enough for you to um, give it a slice of your monthly budget. Gotcha. And as the system is built around the monthly budget, there is no problem whatsoever in in kind of giving something. Uh, to everything, and you don't really need to care if it was 100% perfect or or not, because um, the simplicity of it makes it worth uh, using anyhow. Yeah, I, I love the simplicity for the consumers. Uh, tell me how Flatter, how you guys look at the partnerships with all of these content sites. Uh, you know, the the liking and the the video consumption, and uh, how do you guys go? How do you uh, plan your roadmap and and sort of decide which sites you're going to go out and be partners with, and you're going to. It looks like you're using their APIs for 
like yeah. Twitter, the favorites, for instance, or uh, GitHub stars are great. I'm a huge fan of, uh, I come from the development side. Um, how do you guys decide which sites you're going to work with, which sites let you? Uh, it looks like actually Twitter came down or you might have had an issue, um, yep. or where you also have, uh, every, your, the audience should know you have a browser plugin that yep. also does some of the connection. So oh, wow. uh, how, how do you guys look at all of the partnerships and, and, you know, I mean, this could grow forever, right? Like how big is that directory of uh, partner content sites going to grow eventually? Is it going to be hundreds, thousands? Uh, large eventually, or are you going to uh, get the community to help you with that integration, or uh, what's the roadmap and long term look like for that? So basically, we integrate the services that we know that people want because they tell us, uh, yeah. and also, of course, based on the usage of of the service and the, what what kind of content they have, okay. um, and of course, also what's possible to do with the APIs. Uh, for example, people have requested Pinterest, but Pinterest doesn't have an API, so that's not really possible. I see. Um, gotcha. Then you can also argue that maybe Pinterest isn't a good example anyhow, but that's something else. Um, and basically, we want to be everywhere where people consume and have great content, uh, meaning that the list of services that we support is, of course, meant to be as long as people want it to be, okay. and what's technically possible. Well, one thing uh, Jeff had told me, because I, I haven't had that much experience with Flatter, is uh, Jeff was suggesting a couple of days ago that if somebody uh, did something on his GitHub, GitHub page, that it basically mirrored the Flatter, you know, um, the Flatter, um, you know, trigger. Basically, by liking something or by GitHubbing whatever that function is, you don't need to do the Flatter thing. It basically syndicates start. that. That, so in that case, you would call that star to flatter, I guess. Yeah. So that's that's we say like favorite or star gotcha. because that's the three three words that services listen, are. Listen, I think I honestly I think that's brilliant. If you can just integrate and that way there's not an additional function they've got they've got to add another button. You know, many times I see these blogs with like the five buttons. You know, tweak this. You know, share this. Pin this and. All these, all these, yeah. all these freaking buttons. There's too many buttons. You know. Yep, I agree. And so, uh, we think that the the favorite or like or star um, thing that people are already doing is is lacking the oomph, so to speak. So it becomes kind of a pat of the back, but nothing more. And the ability to uh, connect a, a small micro transaction on top of that um, actually creates the function that was meant to be there to begin with. Uh, because just clicking a button saying eh, right. um, becomes, of course, you can use it as, as a voting system, but it doesn't really matter for the one, for the, the creator or the content in itself. Okay. Um, yeah. And this makes it actually matter in a real, yeah. uh, real so way. Absolutely. Do you think this is really helping, helping musicians? Uh, there's one product I want to mention. Uh, you guys have an API that uh, I want to get into, but it looks like there's a product called Flat Drop that does uh, one flatter than download so it's a paywall for SoundCloud um, yeah. like for musicians to kind of get a flatter for a download of their music yeah. uh, which is a great idea like a sort of paywall for so uh, is it, tell me more about are there products like that popping up that are using the API to to use you guys as a platform for creative things like that and how, how much of this is based around musicians that are really uh, making great use of this Music to start with, there's the music industry is a very strange industry um, because oh, yes. it has this this middle layer of of labels and right. managers and stuff, right. and the connection between the actual consumer and the artist who made the music is in many cases uh, not connected to the experience of listening to music. Right. Uh, there might be a very good connection on on Twitter or Facebook or something like that, but it it doesn't really. Uh, it's not in the place where people consume the music. Uh, that makes the music industry very complicated for this type uh, of what we're doing. Also, of course, um, because of all the um, terms that artists agrees to when they're signing with the label and what they can do and how they can make money on their uh, on what they're doing, and that also complicates things. Right. Um, when it comes to third-party services, we have the API to uh, find the ways that people want to use this and the um, idea of using favorites and like, likes for 
uh, firing uh, actually comes from the community. Okay, great. Uh, there were there were some uh, developers that thought that this could be a, a great and simple use case, and yeah. they tried it, and people liked it. And then we, of course, thought that if people like it that much, maybe we should incorporate it into our uh, main product. Awesome. And uh, they were very happy we did it, and they thought that that's how it's supposed to be. Um, but their services kind of proved the point for us. Uh, they 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 showed that. This was um, what people asked for. So yeah, I think it's great that you guys have a platform. Uh, an API proves that it uh, can support you know more than just you know your guys' buttons. Yeah, absolutely. So we think that the button is just one way of doing it, and and probably in the future um, the buttons will not be as used. Buttons are disappearing more and more, and you get the tweet functions in, into the operating systems directly, for example. Right. Um, exactly. So prob hopefully we'll, we will drop all this, like you said, 10 different buttons in yeah, the bottom yeah. of, of pages. and like. Yeah, which, no, it, it's as great. They, as they are always there, why should they be there? Why, it's why a great yeah. strategy. No, no, listen, man. It, this, uh, you know, it, it, every new social network wants to get their button out there, you know? Uh, I'm I'm just waiting. I'm sure LinkedIn's got their button. You know, I know G Plus has got their button. Pinterest has got their. But everybody wants to get their buttons, and yeah. uh, now we need. Now we're trying to get the flatter button out there. You know, let's just figure out a way to just just syndicate that and have that action spread on on one main one or something. That would be ideal. So. Yeah, and buttons only work for um, the type of content that people publish on their website. So you need to have the, the content and then the button next to it. Mm -hmm. And for music, for example, which is a very good example, uh, people normally listen to music in their mobile phone uh, in some kind of application or they have an, even have an MP3 collection. Right. And that's not a web page. That's not a place where you can place a button in, in any way. Anyhow. Right, yeah. That's a good point. And that's, that's, that's true for a lot of more content types also. So yeah, I mean, having the button integrated into the experience is uh, is amazing. I mean, one of the things actually that I should point out that I really admire about your new release is uh, your unclaimed page in the catalog. Uh, and you know, so inherently the button is not just people flattering; they're favoriting, and so you get the top favorites. So on GitHub, it looks like uh, Torvalds is the top uh, unclaimed uh, like favorite account, and Vision Media is uh, someone who does some Node JavaScript. I admire. Uh, and you can kind of see, or XKCD is a comic on Twitter yep. that's at the top and unclaimed, or Wikipedia, and you know you can kind of pick out some names. Uh, but I think it's great that these people uh, have like money waiting for them if they just go sign up for Flatter. Is that right? Yeah, um, it, but it's a, it's actually a twist on that one because there are there are a few services that have tried the idea of collecting money for uh, creators or create creation that um, hasn't agreed to them collecting the money. Huh. And that's that's a that's a that's a quite bad choice uh, because oh, okay. it it creates all these orphan payments that doesn't really have a, a someone to uh, receive them. Uh -huh. All these unclaimed flatters are based on uh, our connection systems. You can't do unclaimed flatters for uh, random content. Uh, so there's there's always a, a an account that can claim them, but still. Uh, the money hasn't changed hands, so these unclaimed flatters are not, so to speak, performed for real uh, until that person joins the system, and right. then you, uh, those flatters will be part of that monthly budget. So until they have joined, all your uh, money will go to the people that actually are using the system. Um, for example, Readability right. had this this uh, payment system where. And they gave money to the stuff that you added to their uh, reader list, and it turned out that like 80, 90 percent of the money never found uh, someone to give them to. And of course, people didn't like didn't like that. That's that's what right. not that's what not that's not the idea. Right. Um, it wasn't the idea why they, they started uh -huh. to use it. Right. Uh, so we think it's it's better to be able to say that this uh, content I want to flatter this content or this creator. And you will get the money once you join up. But until that date, I will give all my money to the people who actually want to. Okay. So, so your money isn't going to waste, but it sure is a great incentive for uh, these content creators to join Flatter. Yeah. So that's 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 yeah. the basic idea. It's the it's it creates an incentive, and it also uh, creates a possibility for the users to say who they want uh, want to give money to and who they think should join. Um, 
instead of just shouting it out. You, you know, I have to say, uh, this was uh, PayPal's domain to lose, and they have done a horrible job in this area. And uh, why do you suppose PayPal didn't uh, didn't didn't get this whole micropayment thing? Like, what's your feeling? Like, what... they actually closed down their micropayment service the other day. Oh, they closed down. Is it because of fraud? Is it because uh, what do you think? What do you think was going on there? Um, I'm guessing they didn't make any money on it. So wow. donations or, or voluntary payments or whatever you want to call it is a, a it's a huge market. If you look at charities, for example, there are lots of money in it. Right. But uh, compared to actual payments, uh, it's extremely small. Um, meaning that mm. probably people don't really see the value in doing it. Um, they make so much money on their payments, so right. why care? Right. Um, and also, has PayPal really innovated in 10 years? Nothing, nothing, no innovation. Yeah. I have to tell you, uh, it, they're a big disappointment in my in my book. Uh, this is <laughs> this this whole micropayment thing. Nobody's cracked it. It's and I, I really I hope you guys um, hope you guys crack this nut. So how far are you along? Like, what is your burn rate? Are you guys profitable or are you funded? What's going on behind the scenes here? Um, we are not profitable. Uh, we are funded. Uh, we have investments from London. Okay. And um, the idea of the funding is to become profitable. And, and, and I'm assuming you hopefully you got a low burn rate. You got a pretty long runway here. Yeah. Good. Good. So and, we're we're. And no, so never mind. Was, I was just going to ask. So so uh, right now, obviously, you know, you guys are still technically trying to get this uh, button, you know, this button function out there. Uh, you know. How far along are you to where you guys are breaking even? I mean, do you guys see maybe six months down the road, a year down the year, where you will be breaking even? Depends completely on what what kind of development we are um, we need to do and want to do, and and what kind of opportunities uh, arise. Um, so basically, if you are getting traction, if you get a lot of traction. Um, Breaking even becomes a, a less or bigger issue. It depends, um, right, right. but we have a we have a business model that means that usage uh, equals money for us. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, yeah we yeah. Do, we don't have the the business model of uh, let's find a way to monetize this in three years. We gotcha. don't care about it right now. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So that's, hey, uh, that's, that makes things a lot easier, of course. Yeah. 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 So you guys are based out of Sweden, right? Uh, yep. So I, you guys mentioned taking euros. Uh, people could uh, you can join for free, and you can choose to pay like anything from like five, ten, twenty dollars a month, right? Yep. Um, what about Bitcoin? Any plans for you guys to accept Bitcoin? Uh, everyone's talking about that right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we plan to do it. Um, what people are are really asking for is Bitcoin Bitcoin integration in the way that you actually give and get bitcoins. Right. Oh, okay. And that would that that would mean that we will need to have two currencies in the system, and um, that will also result in people getting bitcoins that don't really know what bitcoins is or even want them. <laughs> okay. uh, so that's not a really good option. So the logical thing is to be able to trade your bitcoins for money into the system, gotcha. uh, exchanging it. Um, when you put it into the system, and maybe even do the opposite of, of getting bitcoins out, bitcoins but out, then right. it also becomes a trade, um, and that's the way we can do it, and that's also the way we um, we plan to do it. Um, bitcoin oh, is a, is a uh, bitcoin is a very good community, okay. But it, when it, you actually look at the statistics of, um, for example, Reddit and WordPress, uh, when they integrated it, there's it's a very small usage, right? Um, so it's 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 really I think the the grand question is what are people doing with their bitcoins, except losing right. money right now, okay. um, due to the bitcoin crash. But um, is it a trade currency or is it actually a currency that people uh, use for for buying stuff? And then also becomes the question, of course. Um, Lots of people use it for trade and, and not so much buying stuff, and it's that because there is nothing to buy or because they don't want to buy stuff. Okay. Yeah, not to devalue the the currency, but you know, it being an online currency, it might make sense to be more of a micro currency. Uh, I know it still has an inherent cost in each transaction, but uh, it's definitely no, interesting, it, and I'm glad you guys are exploring it. No, it doesn't have a cost for a transaction if you if you're using. 
um, you can send bitcoins for free. So it's very, very suitable for micro uh, transactions. Um, Bitcoin didn't exist when we started this, but the, the biggest problem is that bitcoins is still a um, new currency. It's, it's that still early. It's very early. Yeah, 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 it's very early, and you yeah. don't know what it, yeah. what will happen early. with it. And, and if people put in like a hundred dollars in bitcoins without without result, and they losing all the money a uh, sure. month later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So moving flatter over to bitcoin, for example, would mean that we will be one hundred percent living on the fact that bitcoin doesn't die. Gotcha. Yeah, or, it's exciting to live on the wild internet, right? <laughs> yeah. I so, think we're living on the wine with Twitter anyhow. So, so, so Linus, what right. what is the biggest problem that you guys are having right now? Um, I think the biggest problem it's two problems. Of course, it's the idea of, of giving money for something that is free. Okay. Uh, and that's that's not uh, anything that uh, fits uh, everyone. Okay. Um, you obviously think it's a good idea. Uh, others think that's free is free and I want it for free and why should I pay for it? Okay, gotcha. Um, but it's it's kind of the same as for charity is that uh, some people, um, it, it's a very small percentage of people that actually gives money to charities. Right. That doesn't mean that charities uh, isn't a very profound thing in the society and people uh, think they should be there. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, Amul and I have been covering startups uh, for the past couple months. I mean, how many Kickstarter type uh, websites we've covered, I can't even count. Uh, no, you know, the, the sort of crowdfunding thing is just taking off and uh, definitely proving itself, I think, in the, with the masses that it's a popular idea. Uh, yeah, people are willing this, to, it, to do this sort of thing. Yeah, at the same time, it's, it's really only Kickstarter that, that um, manages to do it in a, in a big scale. Right. And if you check the biggest Kickstarter projects, it's, it's a lot of money. Uh, but it's still not a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so it's it's in a very early stage of um, crowdfunding, so to yeah. speak, in general. Yeah. I completely uh, agree. Yeah. Yeah. I completely yeah. agree. Yeah. Okay. But but it, it's obvious that we are moving towards this, and then the, the curves are pointing in the right direction for everyone, and people are understanding the idea of um, some people making it possible so everybody else can can have it for free. Okay. Um, Kind of, kind of understanding how uh, the freemium model um, could work in a bigger perspective. Okay. So, the, if Google Apps, for example, some people pay for it, and that makes it possible for everybody to have it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Google was probably a bad example because they make all the money on on, on ads. But on ads, yeah. Um, Dropbox, for example, much better. Dropbox okay. is making a lot of money, and uh, there are probably a percentage-wise a very few that actually pays for it. Right. And, and we can have the same situation when it comes to um, content creation. Um, Wikipedia, for example, there are a, a bunch of people giving donations to Wikipedia for, to make Wikipedia exist. Right. That also means that everybody else can have Wikipedia free. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, and that's, that's probably a situation that will be much more common uh, Got on the web. In general. Got you. So, so that's, that's the number one problem is getting people to getting used to paying for things that they used to get for free. Yeah. That's one. The second, what, what, pro uh, the second problem is actually getting creators to understand that um, what they do, there are people that find it valuable and there are people who want to give them money. Who want to pay. Yeah. yeah who want to pay for their Who want to content. support them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's uh, has proven to be much harder than with um, than we thought. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. And, yeah, and wh so, why so do you think that, that is? I mean, do these guys just fundamentally believe everybody's just don't they don't want to pay for anything on the web? Is that they, it's hard to get them to to let go of that belief? Or what do you think it is? Probably a combination of factors. Some say they feel it feels like begging. Um, some say it it's it, they just don't understand that. Uh, there are people that find value in their in, in their content, okay. um, and technical reasons, of course, they might not understand how it works, what to do, um, how to communicate it. For example, okay. um, you can you can, for example, take a Kickstarter project with a bad video, would it get any money? Okay. So in that case, you need to be able to create a good video, and if you can't. Create a good video. It doesn't really matter if you want to do a great. It always product. starts with great content. Yeah. 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 So that's 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 the two biggest issues I think, and that's also why we created the 
uh, more simple way of using Flutter with the likes and favorites and yeah. also mm -hmm. uh, the reason why we created the unclaimed system so the people who actually wants to support thing, uh, something can be the people telling the creators that use this because we want we want to give you something awesome awesome you know it'd be really great if you can maybe cut to the product now maybe do us give us a little quick tour pretend for example you're a musician or something how you know how would they go about uh, or, or consumer or you know the, the musician part maybe show us both sides sure so um, this is uh, our catalog uh, and it's based on um, popular content okay so for example if we take video here because we're doing, doing video right now um, yeah, so I mean, I imagine this uh, flatter could become Im uh, immensely popular with like uh, podcasters like us who are trying to find a way to monetize each of our episodes. You know, we spend a little bit of time here and there, uh, and we do it maybe out of passion and uh, you know want to put a button on there. I think it's great that uh, you know uh, this is a perfect use case, right? I think uh, an up and coming niche of uh, content creators that are kind of looking for uh, you know a little bit of response from the audience uh, with these yep. buttons? Um, it's actually, uh, the fact is actually that the podcast is the uh, most common use case for us. Really? And it's also the, the, the uh, most um, uh, successful one. Oh, wow, okay. So we can, we can take the podcast just for, just to sh prove my point here. Uh, my ears are perked uh, up right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's most popular in Germany, so let's turn off the language wow. filter here. I don't speak German, so I have turned that off. But for example, here you have uh, podcasts, and as you can see, most of the stuff is German. Okay. Uh, if you show everything, and uh, this is these are the trending uh, ones, so they have like a hundred or something flatters each. And if you go for the uh, all over top list. Um, you will get a better image here. You can see that this podcast called Kados Radio Express has 27,000 flatters. Oh, wow. Okay, and that's, yeah. Remember. Uh, yeah, and that's for their main um, item or thing, as we call it. Um, and it's the German podcaster, Tim Pritla, who does this, and he does a lot of shows. And if you check his profile, you get a, a overview of how the system works here also. Okay. Uh, you can see that he has actually got uh, 153,000 fighters in total. Oh, okay. Um, and you can see uh, the activities he has of quite a list of social people. icons. It looks like there. Uh, it, most likely, is yep. he just putting embed codes on each of his posts, or uh, is it automatically coming through from Vimeo or one of the networks where he has the podcast uh, broadcasting? He he is um, he's, he's running his own services and using WordPress and a uh, plugin for podcasts that uh, creates everything automatically. Um, so each thing he each episode he he puts up gets a flatter button. It's added to their RSS feed. Uh, you can get it uh, through iTunes and anywhere you want. And he uh, is as you were saying using all these social services that makes it possible to flatter him on all these services also. Um, yeah. So he's, he's doing a very, very, very good job in, in creating um, like the full spectrum of possibilities for him. I can see that, yeah. Um, and this is exactly how it should be. This is, this is uh, basically everything he does is, is possible to flatter. And that means that his listeners uh, can tell him exactly why um, they give him money and what content uh, they think is valuable, um, and so on. Oh, this is great! And, and so I have to, I have to tell you, Linus. Um, uh, you know, I, I really think that uh, you guys are fairly new. I mean, I honestly, I hadn't really seen a lot of flatter buttons out there, and I know you guys uh, are still growing, but there seems to be yeah. a huge, you know, uh, it seems to be a lot of potential for you guys to really grow and, and get. Uh, you know, get some of these big bands, get some of the big musicians, maybe the big podcasters, all that kind of yep. thing. 
Absolutely. So, so um, one of the things that happened since we started three years ago is that people have moved away from their own web more and more, um, using uh, all these services for, for hosting their content. Right. And that also made our original product with the embedded Flutter button harder to harder to use because mm, you can't put it on, on Vimeo or YouTube or yep. Facebook or whatever. Um, so that's that's one of the technical things we have tried to solve to make it possible to uh, Flutter is content anyhow. Okay. Um, that's that's kind of the future we are seeing a, a, a way of, of uh, adapting Flutter to become a system that um, can handle flatters toward any type of content in any place and basically finding the owner of it. Okay. Um, I, I see you're wearing, a, are you wearing a, a bracelet like an up or something? Is there any way that you people can flatter your like activity on RunKeeper or uh, you know some exercise inputs and you know uh, well, yeah. what are the extremes of the flattering that you, uh, you've seen so far? Uh, you get the behind the scenes and the analytics and some of the cool charts. Uh, no, the, the extremes. It, it's quite hard because everything we do, everything people fire is based on a URL of some kind. And okay. and why that URL was created uh, is, is could be in some cases quite hard for us to understand. Um, so we we built a QR usage of QR codes a couple of years ago because QR codes were hip and cool back then. Okay. Um, and of course, it didn't work because nobody uses QR codes. Right, uh, right. But, but some people put up QR codes on the town and then let people yeah. flatter different stuff. Oh, wow. Um, which is kind of cool ID. Uh, in reality, um, it doesn't work because it's <laughs> way too tedious to use your camera and point at a QR code. And the only thing you do is actually getting a URL. And you can type that URL in anyhow. Um, but I think we can we can probably see a, a bunch of cool use cases um, in the future. Um, like you mentioned, flat drop, for example. That's that was an obvious oh, use okay. case uh, for us, but it wasn't we that that actually tried to do it. It was a developer that did it. Um, yeah, yeah, I was going to say I think it's great that you guys have an API, and I mean our audience is uh, developers and startup entrepreneurs, and hopefully they're listening and thinking about how they can use your API and your yep. platform to build uh, their own startups or products. Uh, I mean, even products, right? Like a paywall, you know, this is flatter than download and SoundCloud. I can imagine doing that in a, in a hackathon in a, a weekend. Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I really um, want to know, uh, example, Linus, what I really want to know, Linus, is, is somebody, are, are people actually making real money? Like, are, do you have anybody that's actually paying their rent, for example, or paying their car yep, payment? The, Yes, uh, the uh, podcast you just saw did. He, mm -hmm. he gets uh, uh, all, almost all his money. I think he makes like 2,500 euros a month now. Oh, wow. Um, you hear that? I'm old so is the so new so medium right here. <laughs> wow. Okay, so this is real money. This isn't just pizza money. This is a. Uh, wow, okay. No. All right. That's, that's actually for real. That's great. That's fantastic. So that's awesome, fantastic. Bro. Uh, another option to make money off your, off your uh, internet activities is a, is a good thing. Of course, I, was, I think that there's there's a, a huge um, group of creators that has this possibility for real, uh, that has built up uh, multiple hundreds of thousands of followers on, on Twitter and Facebook, and that really loves their content. They are waiting for it. They do everything they can do to spread it, to share their love, um, to make um, the lives easier or better for the creators. Right. And I, I think this could the help one a thing resurgence of that's still lacking is the way to actually get Sure, absolutely. Everything that people consume on the web that they see as value uh, is, of course, something that uh, is possible to use, that, that there should be um, people wanting to support the existence of the content, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Linus, let me ask Especially you something. Let me ask you this: Are yep. I, I know uh, I know you guys are you know obviously burning through your funds and hopefully just trying to grow the business, just trying to grow it and make it as big as possible. Um, what uh, I mean, are you guys approaching some of the big brands? Are you going after the big record labels? Are you going after some big content creators uh, to try to get them on board? Or how how are you trying to get the marketing distribution thing? Are you going to go grassroots? What's your plan? <laughs> Uh, we have we have tried multiple ways, and we have of course approached uh, a lot of big companies. Um, 
the problem with the big companies is that they are still uh, looking for a replacement of their way of getting money right now. So they, they still think that they have sold some kind of physical product, like a paper or a CD or whatever, and now we should replace that with, with a digital equivalent that makes us the same amount of money or even more. Right. And we want to, they want to do this overnight like this. Like yeah. like, now, now it's done. Yeah, yeah. And that's not how the net works, and that's not how the people works, and that's not what I have done for, for 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Um, meaning that they kind of still think that it's possible, and they don't... Um, they they don't think they they need to build something up gradually. Well, so my, um, I have some family. I was getting the... really noisy here because people are making coffee. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, well talk we loud. This is a smoking it's... hot coffee so, show. <laughs> so I have I have some family and friends that are in the movie industry, and uh, most of the money yeah. the movie industry used to make came from DVDs, but now nobody really buys DVDs anymore. And people basically stream them off of Netflix, or they get torrents, or whatever. Like, do you see this yeah. making an, a, a material impact in in the movie industry? The movie industry is still a industry that is uh, based around the idea of, of first getting the money and then creating the movie and then hopefully getting the money back in multiple amounts. Uh, it has a very different kind of funding mechanic uh, than than many other. Uh, types of content, um, and and basically that kind of, of way of making money and that type of content is probably not suitable um, for a voluntary, as suitable as something as uh, for a voluntary payment system. So what we are aiming to do, and our goal to begin with, was to solve a or scratch an itch that actually exists, and these the uh, itch that exists is how to uh, get creators that doesn't make any money, some money, mm, um, okay. basically until you have a record label in your back, how would you make any money on your music? Gotcha. If you're ever doing a podcast and you, and you get thousands and thousands of viewers, uh, the only way to make any money on it is to go to adver uh, advertisement and then you need to have a podcast that actually is talking about something that adver advertisers right. are willing to spend money on and so on. Of course, of course, and yeah. Um, we have the situation right now that means that uh, consumers, uh, regardless of type of content, doesn't equal money uh, because you don't sell the content. Uh, in the physical world, there were there were a situation that if you had people consuming the content, you automatically got money because they had to buy the physical product in any any type of form. And in the digital world, that's not the case. But why isn't isn't it possible to create that thing? Uh, in some kind of virtual or, or digital way, anyhow, oh, and that's 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 kind of the the main itch we have tried to uh, scratch to from from the beginning. How to solve this situation with the, so to speak, independent creator? Gotcha. Uh, yeah, and I think that's the uh, that's the first that's the first thing. You haven't seen Nike do a Kickstarter, for example. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, is anyone else doing this besides, like, you know, that's not just a micropayment thing? Uh, I mean, anyone else competitive to you, really? Yeah, that's a good um, question. Yeah, uh, when we started, we had a competitor that was quite, quite um, the same thing called uh, Kachingo. Uh, I think right. they scrapped their uh, donation system uh, now. Uh, recently, we have had uh, one company that called SentUp that you might have heard of okay. uh, that is doing uh, what we have been moving away from. They are doing a, an embedded button that people are supposed to put on their website. Okay. Uh, also adding a uh, ID of 50% going to charity, I think. Uh, oh, so okay. 50% is going to the creator and 50% is going to charity. Gotcha. Could be, a, could be a, a, a twist on it. And then we have a system called Copper. Um, that is uh, also very new. Um, that um, has the idea of, of voluntary payments towards um, uh, content. Uh, there is also another one called Tip the Web that makes it possible to tip any website. I think they have huge issues with actually finding the uh, owner of the content because you can actually tip any website anywhere. Right. Um, um, so there are there are some some systems that kind of does the same thing. Um, 
the idea of, of our we think that the 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 real kicker in our system is the monthly budget and the idea of dividing the monthly budget yeah, meaning okay. that we can actually do one click things with, and yeah. we can hook it on existing uh, the functions because there is no need to define a value for each micro donation you do right. I like that. Uh, meaning yeah. that you can you yeah. can ex you can do it. You you can actually create a use case where you watch a video to the end and then you automatically flatter right. it. Right. No, no, that's brilliant. Uh, we had it. Yeah. yeah, we had a a podcasting app that integrated flatter um, maybe a year ago called Instacast. Okay. Uh, that had that exact use case that when you uh, listen to the podcast to the end, it flattered it. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, video Apple, games? Apple didn't like that use case. Oh so yeah, that's, that's great. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, video yeah. games. Um, video games is we have been discussing that, and there are a lot of really great independent video games created mm -hmm. um, that has um, a huge audience. The problem, or the the problem, the, the great thing about video games is that there is actually not a, a it's actually not hard to monetize a video game um, because you sell it uh, and most games also needs cam some kind of, of network uh, server um, co cooperative play or, or um, non cooperative play maybe um, that you uh, need to access the developer service to, to uh, play and then you can of course um, force people <laughs> to pay to to be able to play it, right? Um, that means it might not be the the, the big problem uh, it is. Uh, but for example, we are arguing that that uh, if you pay like uh, ten dollars for Spotify or Audio or something, mm -hmm. that's a very very small amount of money for uh, all the music in the world. And why isn't there a way to support the artists that you like even more on top of that? Right. And that could be the same usage, usage for, for video games that I, I, I think this independent developer um, should have an, a possibility to do even better. Okay. And of course, there's also a use case of uh, flattering um, players inside the game. If you have a, a, a game, oh, yeah. like a, a multiplayer game of some kind, that there where you're helping each other, uh, why not uh, flatter uh, the, the the people playing? And yeah. the best use case is probably all the content that is around the game, because oh, even yeah. though the gamer, uh, the, the developer can sell the game or they can sell access to the game, right. there's always a huge community of people creating. Uh, how to's, yeah, uh, yeah. graphics, oh, yeah, packages yeah. of different yeah, kind yeah. of blogs, help, yeah. and that is impossible to monetize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's something that the game, um, it's it's extremely important for Minecraft uh, right. to have a vibrant community. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all community driven. I, I'm really hoping someone's listening that figures out how to take your API and platform to glue it to some of these indie games because like you're saying there's just so much content that they're producing that they're so passionate about uh, everything from the textures to the audio to the levels yeah. and the map designs yeah, and yeah. The, yeah. Uh, like you said even tutorials and walkthroughs and yeah. Uh, yeah, everything yeah bug yeah. fixing and, then, and, and you know on, yeah like the all the the uh, extremely large streaming market for for people that are playing games or costing games and just talking about them and oh, showing yeah, that too. Yeah, that's, that's, that's popping uh, is popular right now too. It's very similar to podcasting. Uh, Justin yeah. TV uh, has a Twitch.tv, I think, is uh, becoming a big player. Yeah, it yeah, is I, the biggest player. Th there's no question, uh, Linus, that the, the, there's a huge, huge opportunity here. Huge opportunity. Uh, Probably one of the biggest ever. Yeah, yeah. I would not argue with you, man. The, whoever cracks this micropayment thing, man, you guys are going to be on top. Yeah, so you like going for the big problems. We love that. Here. Yeah, you, you're swinging yeah, for the fences here. Yeah, we think this is the one of the, the biggest, problem, biggest internet problems uh, so far. Yeah. Uh, at least the one that hasn't been solved yet. Yeah, hasn't been solved yet. Uh, no. Right. You know, and, and in some way, uh, Apple has done it with the ninety-nine cent click. You know, and and Amazon's done it with their one-click thing. You know, but those yep. are all, you know, they're not open web. You know, you have to be part of the iOS store, or you have to be part of the but Amazon. There, there's also there's also one really huge issue with that we think, and that's the idea of of 
uh, moving the physical equivalent of getting a, a product and you need to pay before you get the product okay. and moving that into the digital world where you don't need to pay to get the product. Why do you need to pay 99 cents before you have even tried the software? Right. So we had the situation where when you, at least when I grew up, where you had shareware and it was um, something that was quite standard that people could copy and spread uh, software. And right. If they liked it, they, they paid for it. Yeah. And that was a really good idea. Why hasn't that catched on into the, so to speak, 2010 digital iOS app store er era? Right. And if you take it another step, uh, why isn't usage linked to payments? So, for example, how many uh, apps haven't you downloaded and, and paid for? And then you have the first... Uh, situation where you download it, you try it, and it's shit. Yeah, right. and it's like, <laughs> right. okay, yeah. it, was 90, yeah. it was 99 cents, but it yeah. was still 99 cents. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. For, for nothing. And yeah. then you have the next situation where you're like, oh, yeah, maybe, and you use that app like once a week or once a month, and you're like, um, yeah, it was 99 cents. That's, right, that's right. fine. And then you have the third use case, and you buy something for 99 cents, and it's awesome. Right. And you use it every single day, yeah. and it's still 99 cents. You didn't pay even, enough Even though the value for you has been so much higher. Yeah. So why isn't usage uh, linked to uh, the way we are paying? Yeah, I, that's uh, brilliant, man. That is brilliant. Uh, usage tied to paying. I, I love it. Yeah, yeah we have this software as service um, or, or cloud thingies where you pay every month, and if you don't use it anymore, you don't need to pay. That becomes that, That's somewhere in between of... Um, towards what what I'm talking about gotcha. now, there's people here in in blue blue shirts. They, I'm guessing, they are important. Oh. <laughs> uh, light light blue shirts. That's important. Okay. okay. Yeah, but, yeah. No, no, but I, for example, you can you can create a software that every time you use it, it flatters itself, or it flatters itself every three days you use it, or you can you can flatter inside the software. You can flatter uh -huh. the software itself, so you can get yeah, this. Yeah this way of either um, usage is linked to payments or uh, you yeah. can say how valuable it is and, and that way uh, you're, you're kind of paying uh, what you think is, is the value. That's beautiful. With the indie gaming thing got my gears going thinking that you know you could almost use the achievements as a flatter mechanism and you know in some way like you're saying just kind of you know have usage linked to flattering. Um, yeah sure. You can, really you can beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I love um, your guys' I, philosophy. It's so strong. Uh, I want to mention to all of our developer and web audience, by the way, that on your website you have uh, your colophon uh, with all of your uh, open source tools and like what you guys use client side for design and server side, PHP, MySQL, Nginx, uh, Memcache. Uh, I love that you guys give cred to all of that. And uh, you know, even on the design side, I was going through and borrowing some of the same resources that you guys use. The uh, social CSS social buttons are great because uh, you know. When you're connected to like, like I asked earlier in the show, you're connected to like a hundred networks. Uh, how do you keep up with it, right? It's a scaling issue that's uh, difficult uh, as a designer, and so it's nice to have these uh, resources that you guys uh, uh, are so gracious to support. Yeah, absolutely. We we think that's that's what you're supposed to do, and it's also great to not need to do all this yourself. And there are of course a lot of people asking for us us to release our system uh, open source. Uh, yeah. Something that rhymes very badly with um, handling money. <laughs> Finance, yeah. Security. Open source do not go together. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like <laughs> if you release the code, you're kind of inviting people to find uh, security holes in it. Right. And they sure. will find it. Yeah, um, and, they but will. and they might exploit it and start flattering themselves <laughs> crazily or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. People would do that. Uh, sadly enough, yeah, but yeah, yeah. we're trying to uh, release every kind of tool we're making that is standalone that has no security issues, uh, open source, because we think that's that's kind of the spirit uh, that we're working in, and, and that's that's the way it should work. It, it's in the idea of if one person creates it, why not give it to everybody else? Gotcha. Oh. We love to hear that. I mean, that's worth flattering alone. Uh, that goes a long way with our audience. Yep. <laughs> so, so Linus, can uh, you know Jeff had told me briefly that you know you uh, your co-founder was part of uh, Pirate Bay. Can you tell us a little bit about that history and that connection? Yeah, uh, it's Peter, um, and um, the 
background, the, the like the reason uh, P Peter came up with the basic idea for Flutter, and the reason is that he was kind of fed up with the uh, industry's um, way of not trying to uh, solve a problem by seeing what technology can do instead right. of trying to uh, lock people and, and put things behind walls and then trying to make okay. a physical, a, a digital equivalent of the physical world. Okay, so now, now we're talking here. This is the skinny. So basically, here we are. This is obviously a technologist. He found a way of creating new technology to distribute content. The content owners obviously didn't like the fact they didn't have any control over this. They went ahead and threw the lawyers at you. They threw the law at you. But technology keeps them going. You know, technology doesn't stop for anybody. And no, so, of course not. And so he, as a technologist, said, hey, you know, why don't we use technology to solve this problem? Yeah. Hence, so, so in other words, the industry is not looking at it creatively, right? They've just been running the system as, the, as it's existed for the last X amount of years and uh, you know, hasn't even woken up to the existence of the Internet, it appears. That's why one way of putting it, absolutely. Um, it's also, of course, probably dependent on the fact that they don't know technology. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they don't know how yeah. uh, the digital DNA of the, of the networks or, or how the net wants to be and, and what kind of beast it actually is. Right. And they are trying to um, more or less find um, a way to uh, keep the status quo. Right. Um, that's kind of logical, but not for 15 years, <laughs> maybe. Right. Um, right. So that's 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 where the idea came from to begin with, and it's so old that um, the usage, so the uh, innovation is always a, a a combination of ideas, and um, basically, Flutter was a combination of the dig button and money. Right. Uh, because that's right. that's the button that existed back then. Right. Sure. Right. Yeah, that was yeah. one of the first really popular social buttons, like credibility or like uh, have yeah. rank behind it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what's the that was the first idea, and then it take all, always takes too long to get things started. And me and Peter are childhood friends, so um, he turned to me to make it happen. And, and so yeah. is is so uh, obviously Peter's still involved. He's still making a lot of the technology decisions. Is he still running Pirate Bay, or is he still connected to that? No, um, he is not. Um, he's not a, a on a daily basis working with Fire Rider. He's more like an, you can say, an advisor. And okay. that's very much due to the fact that he had been very preoccupied with um, some kind of trial situation around some kind of. Internet site, right? Selling, selling boats, I think. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So is he? Um, he's not out of the woods yet. He still. Uh, <laughs> he still has to watch his back. Is, is what you're trying to tell me here? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So tell us just real briefly then. How is it like as the CEO founder in this sort of uh, tumult? You know, all founders have a uh, crazy stuff they have to deal with all the time. Uh, how how are you dealing with the day to day? Uh, you know, from where you're sitting. I'm getting up in the morning. I'm drinking coffee and trying to solve problems. I real uh, I respond to email and then I go to sleep. <laughs> Great. You know awesome. what? I didn't ask you. How big is the team? How many guys do you guys have right now? I think we are six seven right now. Okay. Very and you guys cool. like to? Are you all together? You uh, just peeked around the corner like they're with you. Yeah, there are some here, and there are um, one in the U.S. and one that is in Thailand right now. Oh, okay. Uh, complaining that it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so you are a bit distributed, but for the most part, you're all in Sweden. Yep, we are. Got you. Got you. Wow. Well, in I, the I, southern I, part of Sweden. I have to tell you, you know, I I would love, to, uh, you know, we're, we're me and Jeff, we're trying to do this thing where every six or nine months or whatever we will follow up and see how how the startups that we've interviewed are doing and that kind of thing where do you see yourself in six to nine months well, I'm gonna put you on the spot what what are we gonna see uh, I hope we can see a situation where we have uh, managed to create a bunch of success stories uh, for um, people that uh, make independent creation and has a, a big fan base okay. um, where we can um, make their uh, dream come true 
in a way that is not bound to uh, being sucked up by existing structures. Right. Uh, because that's that's something that that I am we think would be better both for their consumers and for for their way of creating stuff and also showing that um, the internet is this place where this is possible right. um, where you actually can can um, become a a creator of content and um, find your audience and then it's kind of done. Yeah. No. And then you can uh, quit you your can job. In a situation where. Yeah. You can quit yeah, your job. Course, you, you, can, you can do yeah, this your full time. Should, yeah. Yeah. Your creation should be your job, and yeah. and yeah. Uh, we have built a system that makes that possible, um, in a way that suits both the creators and the consumers, and they we can tighten the ba the bond between them, um, instead of um, doing the opposite. Wow, it's very cool, very cool. So, uh, I, you know, I look forward to talking to you again in a few months and hearing about these big success stories. Um, yeah. Jeff, uh, any final? I, I mean, we uh, we definitely applaud you for supporting people like us who are yeah. trying to create stuff. I mean, uh, we just interviewed a company that does uh, podcasting for sports commentary, right? So they're supporting the guys, the two guys on a couch that want to start talking about the game. And yeah. uh, now they can put a flatter button on their product and start making money off of it, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. just as easily. So, you know, I think it's really uh, timely, and uh, I think this is really going to succeed. And we'll see you in six yeah, months. Yeah, I have sure. to agree with Jeff. I think you guys, the timing is right, Linus. You yeah. don't mess this up, man. Do not mess this up, buddy. You, you, there is a big pot of gold. Just, just wait in there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Just make that coffee to... extra strong in the morning. Make it strong. Oh, yeah, it, it is every time. <laughs> and now it's awesome. out. Awesome. Got to have smoking hot coffee. Well, we'll send you uh, all of uh, the support from our audience, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you a lot. Okay, well, thanks well, again, thank you, Linus, Linus. For, uh, for being on uh, the show. Uh, if we want to reach you or, or your company, what's, the be what's a good email that we can get a hold of you guys? Uh, we have a contact form on our web. Email is would be for me. Uh, I can tell you my email. It's, it's just linus at flatter.com very easily. Okay. Uh, because when I say it like that, it's not possible to crawl it. <laughs> so I won't get any spam. <laughs> All right, so don't spam them. But, uh, yeah, uh, it, otherwise, it's just the easiest way is probably at flatter on Twitter. Gotcha. Even oh. though we might be a really bit reluctant about Twitter right now. Okay. <laughs> All right, you can also great. use yeah. Apple.net. Yeah. All right, awesome. Well, th and thanks again, everybody. Um, tune in next time.